this is the life of Kim and Kylie's hairstylist. There is a lot of talk around NDAs. Me and Kylie were actually talking about this the other day. We were having an argument. I know you through working with Trisha Paytas, who is a yeah. famous YouTuber. People will probably drag me for saying that. We want to know everything. Kylie fucking Jenner. This is the pivotal moment in my life. Jesus is a hairstylist to the stars. He is most known for working with Kylie Jenner, but he also styles the hair of Kim Kardashian, JLo, Christina Aguilera, Katy Perry, Rosalia, Shay Mitchell, Jessica Alba, and trust me, so many more. He's done four Vogue covers, all before the age of 32. He's an inspiration to me in my life, and I cannot wait for us all to get a closer look into the life of a hairstylist to the stars. Hey, I'm here. Okay, I'm Okay, I'll see you soon. Can I film? Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming. I got you flowers. Sunflowers are favorite. They are my favorite. They're so cute. Thank you. I'll put them away for you because I know. Thank you. You know, I, have, I, had, an, I had an accident over here. No. That was like, what, a week ago now? It's been a week. Yeah, on Sunday, it was my anniversary for me in this boot. Your congratulations. Thank you. I love your place so much. It's so like airy Thank and you. spacious. And look at this chandelier. Honestly, it was such a gem when I found it. I love and, it. Um, it took me a while, but I ended up finding it. A little bit of a mess. We had a party. I can't even imagine like living in a place like this. Like I live in a tiny little apartment. Like I cannot even imagine having this I life. I mean, you know what? At one point in life, I didn't imagine it either. And the swell behind you. <gasps> yeah, these are on my magazine covers. I really accomplished all these, plus a lot of online magazines and other work that I've done in like maybe three years. Three years. Three years. I have got done, I don't even know. I can count. Maybe one, two, three for like five Vogue covers. Do you have a favorite cover? I think my first favorite is probably my American Vogue cover was Rosalia right here. Love it. It's so cute. And then my second favorite, honestly, they're kind of tied for first because this is one of my first major covers here. Um, I did Kylie um, on this cover here with the whole family. It was wow. um, my first ever cover shoot with Kylie and just major cover shoot in general for the US. Like I've done other magazines that like were outside of the US, but whenever you have a US magazine publish you, it's like a dream come true. I think my favorite, this Kylie shoot. Yeah, that was a special moment. We were there just to shoot the cover, and then I saw that The weekend had shot the whole book. And I was just like, Kylie, you're Kylie fucking Jenner. You're not gonna just do the cover. We're gonna <laughs> figure out how we can make this a whole book. And it's a whole book of Kylie. And it's insane how we stayed there for about maybe 14 hours shooting nonstop. Honestly, for sure, like one of my favorite covers. And honestly, one of the covers that people recognize me the most for. It just must feel so surreal to just be like, wow, like I literally do the hair of the woman who has the most followed woman in the entire world. I know, it's insane. I think I've never really seen it that way. Even since day one, I remember I was kind of nervous. I was like, oh fuck, I'm about to go do Kylie Jenner. But I never, looked at her like, oh my God, I'm about to do the most famous woman in the world. I just thought like, she's cool. She is the moment. And at the end of the day, she's the nicest person I think I've ever met. Do you want to cheers? Are we cheersing? Okay, let's cheers. 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 I'm so inspired by your journey. We've known each other about, about three months now. Three months now, yeah. What are the most common questions people ask you when you do the kind of interviews? It just depends. I always kind of reject questions that kind of are a little bit too personal to somebody that isn't me. I can't tell you about their lives because it's not mine. With the Kardashians in specific, there is a lot of talk around NDAs and not being allowed to talk about things. With or without an NDA, I would never speak about somebody else's life. They're inviting you into their home and you should just hold that really deep in your soul, like, and, and, and you should just have just the most respect for these people in that sense. They're so normal, and I know that people will probably drag me for saying that, but they are. They're normal people, they have feelings. With hairstylists and makeup artists, there's a sense of trust that has to come because you're spending hours in the chair with these people mm -hmm. every single morning, and you're hearing their business calls, you're hearing their conversations, you're hearing what's going on in their life, and and if you weren't trustworthy, if you didn't hold that integrity, you would not be working with these people. No, for sure. No, for sure. I, I, I fully agree with you. If there's no trust there, then what, what is it? You don't want me around you, and I don't want you around me. So you're from Houston. I am from Houston, actually a small city called Pasadena, Texas. My childhood was a little bit complicated. At the beginning of my life, I would definitely was raised by my mom and dad. 
but you know just like any parents they were very young and um they made their mistakes and uh my parents didn't believe in divorce my mom ended up moving out i was raised with my dad but my dad also worked a full-time job so i was raised by my great aunt do you remember that time in your life of course it was super traumatizing for me as a child it was difficult it was just like you seeing your mom just like not being genuinely who she is as a person and all i could say for all like my young moms out there i think i have such a deep love for them is that they deal with difficultness like they're trying to be young and at the same time they're trying to raise a child and that alone is very difficult and i just have the most respect for that because i've seen it i've seen people change i've seen people evolve and become amazing humans and amazing parents we hold our parents with these high expectations so to be these giant. saints they're and like human. they're human and I'm 32 right now and my parents had me when they were younger than me and I still don't even feel ready for a child so like and I would definitely be making mistakes if I had a child right now so I just exactly. think when you grow up you realize that like they're human and we have to forgive and love and you do. move on. I was raised by my great aunt and my great aunt is why I am where I am at today. One day she decided to read this book to me and she read this book to me and read this book to me and read this book to me like in and out like put the fucking movie on about the book put the audio book on before audiobook with audiobook and she would play the secret <sighs> and I love The Secret. Yeah, and I didn't know I, that about you. Yeah, like she played The Secret for me every day. She passed away when I was 22, and it was a very like dark time in my life because she was like my parent, she was my mom, she was my dad. She's with me every day of my mm -hmm. life, and I just I love her. When I moved out to LA, I wasn't working at the time. I was trying to make it out here in the fucking street, and I remember I was it came out on Netflix, and I was like, okay, I have all the time in the world. I'm gonna watch The Secret. Like my aunt always told me about this. Three fourths of the way through the docu movie, I was bawling, and I was just like. It's so crazy. I was manifesting everything I wanted in my life and I didn't even know I was manifesting it. This woman mm. tried to teach me, even though I didn't want to learn, I learned it. Jesus is gonna do my hair like I'm one of his clients. I feel honored. So if you guys could see, uh, Matt has like natural, like really pretty hair. Like it's beautiful. Like Thank it's you. amazing, it's stunning. You need a blow dryer with a nozzle. So this is my blow dryer, this is my nozzle. So you heat up the brush so it gets hot, kind of like an iron. You're just going to roll it back and up. I already love it. I actually love it. Okay, fine, you're hired. Let's talk about your journey. Okay. A bit. So you were working at a salon as like a hairdresser, just booking your clients, mm -hmm. half hour clients, getting the haircut in and out, that yeah. kind of a job. Yeah, th that was my job. I was working at a salon in Houston and I decided that it wasn't my life anymore and that I wasn't going to allow that to be my life anymore. I was staring at everybody's Instagrams, like working, doing things that were so major to me at the moment. And I was like, am I just going to sit here all day and being like wishing that I could or am I actually going to fucking do it? Wow. And I'm just that person that actually fucking does it. So that day I decided, I'm like, this is not my life. This is not what I will do. This is my dream, and this is what I'm going to attack. So you decided you're going to move to LA? It was either going to be LA or New York, and at the moment, like, I just was like, I just feel my soul, like, taking me to LA. And I decided that LA was definitely for me. So did you save up money, or how did... How... Uh, uh, I saved up $10,000. I think a little over. I was in like 13000 That's a lot. No, it was a lot. How long did it take you to save up that? Uh, not long. I powered through. I think it took me like maybe like four months. I was hustling. So I was working with strippers, I was working weddings, whatever I could do to get cash on me is what I would do. I paid rent off for a year. Do you remember your first hair gig? I remember I was doing a lot of like test shoots and just like a lot of weddings and a lot of like random things that like honestly anything, anything that would come my way, I would say yes to. I'd be like, yep, mm -hmm, I'm down. Whatever you want a haircut, down. Like $50, down. I know you. Mm -hmm through working with Trisha Paytas, who is a yeah. famous YouTuber. I remember that time of your life because you were on her videos a lot. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of how you started getting your name yeah. out there. Me and my ex-boyfriend, he ended up booking a job with Trisha Paytas. And, and then we, as a couple, became very close to her. And I am forever grateful for Trisha. Um, Trisha is a sweet baby angel and an amazing person that always believed in us. and would always just honestly like give us the last t-shirt she had in her back because she just is that kind of a person. You were involved in Trisha's world, but 
through your ex-boyfriend doing mm-hmm. her hair. Mm-hmm. So when did you make the first leap in your own career as a hairstylist, and who was that with? It was, was um, one of my great friends, Lily Galici. Just like Trisha, I was introduced to her by my ex-boyfriend, who at the time, and still to this day, does her hair. So he introduced you. Mm-hmm. And then when did you get to do her hair? So he wasn't available one day and you I went in there and you did it. went in there and I did my thing and it, it, I landed a job. Fascinating. Mm-hmm. Just like him, I was there to do a job and I just did my best. If it wasn't Lily Galici, it would have been someone else. Like you are, you exactly. deserve to be here. Let's talk about what everyone's clicking this video for. Tell me. Kylie Jenner and Kim Kardashian. The queen and king of Instagram. We are all so fascinated with them. We want to know everything. You have to stay tuned to the next fucking season of Keeping Up. Are you going to be on it? Maybe. No, actually, I don't even know. I never know if I'm on it or not. (laughs) When did you meet Kylie? Three years ago. Through my amazing brother, Ariel. I feel like Ariel's really connected you to a lot of people in this industry. I'm thankful for him. Take me back to that moment that you found out that Kylie Jenner wanted you to do her hair. It's such a funny moment because me and Kylie were actually talking about this the other day. We were having an argument. She's like, no, the first time you did my hair was this day. And I'm like, actually, like, I remember this moment because it was a big moment in my life. And like, maybe to you, it was like, just, right. just a Tuesday, babe. But like, for me, it was like a, like a life changing opportunity in my life. I... I had booked a client like that evening and Kylie wanted me at the same time and I just like found this to be like such a big opportunity for me so I was like I called all my hairstylist friends and I was just like yo like I have this client um I'm not gonna be able to do her anymore like so I ended up definitely finding her a fill-in for her but like I had to do what I had to do to get to Kylie 100 percent, because I just knew that it was gonna be a big opportunity for me how'd you find out did she uh, message you? No, Ariel sent me a text message and was just like, hey, like, what are you doing at 7? Like, Kylie needs your hair done at 7. At the time, I had no assistant. I had nothing. So I remember running to my freaking house. I was, like, organizing my kit, making, literally, like, wiping every bottle down, like, blow-drying all my extensions, just oh my making God. sure everything was extremely organized and prepared and, like, professional. super professional. And, like, I got there, I laid everything out, all my extensions, all my things. Oh. Like, I just had to make sure that I was on a 1,000, even though she probably maybe didn't care, but, like, clearly she did because I'm still with her. But, like, I just, like, wanted to give it my all. She's like, so, I'm going to a concert, and, like, I think I just want a bob. And I'm like... Cool. And then I just started working. She went to the concert and I was like, I just, I don't know if I did a good job. I don't know if I did a bad job. Like, I was extremely nervous. I was freaking out. Like, I was stalking her on fucking Instagram, on Snapchat at the time. Just like, like seeing if she posted anything. She posted a couple of videos and I was just like, oh my God, like I, I, I did this. So then she booked me for the Clive Davis party and like that photo went viral and she was like in love with her hair. And I remember that moment, I'm like, this is a pivotal moment in my life. Like it's about to be up from here. When did Kim come to you? I think it was shortly after Kylie. She had asked me just like a do and go. And then like, it just like, it was like, I killed the do and go. And then it was like, um, it was like nonstop after that. Where do you see your career going in the next five years? I definitely see myself like developing more of a brand within myself, maybe starting a hair care brand and like, and also becoming an entrepreneur and doing much more yes. than just hair. Thank you so much for doing this, oh, taking time out of your me. busy schedule. You're always booked up with all these A-list celebrities. Yeah. You did Kylie this morning. I did. You are such an inspiration to me, and I'm just so excited for people to be inspired by your journey and your story. Anything is possible, and it just takes hard work and belief in yourself. That and just being a good person. Don't ever step on anybody. Don't ever fuck anybody over, because it's going to come back and bite you in the ass. Just be a good, good human being. Thank you so much. Of course.